live on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is Cougar Pre-Match Live. Coming up, we'll hear from head coach Jennifer Rockwood, and we'll get a look at today's starting lineups. Let's begin our coverage of BYU women's soccer and join your host, Jason Shepard. Good evening, BYU soccer fans. Welcome into Cougar Pre-Match Live, and welcome into Sullivan Field in Los Angeles, where tonight the BYU Cougars face the LMU Lions in the regular season finale. Jason Shepard with you alongside former Cougar Jenny Bug-Smith. Last Saturday night in Provo was a pretty special one. Not only did BYU defeat sixth-ranked Santa Clara 2 to nothing in the process they clinched at least a share of the West Coast Conference Championship, and they punched their ticket to the NCAA Tournament. Now a win tonight over the Lions gives BYU the outright Conference Championship, and it plays into seeding for the NCAAs and could result, could result, in a home game at South Field. The bug tonight isn't just about going through the motions. It's fun, and it's great for Coach Rockwood and the coaching staff that this team still has something to play for. Definitely. I think so, Jason. Uh, I heard Jen say on the way out that if they win, they get Froyo. So, obviously, there's some big – I mean, they're playing Oh, Fro- so there's incentive for all of there us There is then. an incentive for all of us, yes. But I think – I mean, last year ended in disappointment. I think they didn't win the, to- the tournament, didn't get into the NCAA tournament. I think this year they have something to prove and kind of want to put an exclamation mark on that season and finish it out with a big bang, you know? Well, the weather is great tonight. It is still 78 degrees here in Los Angeles. The sun is setting But, hey, it's Southern California, and we've got soccer for you tonight. Cougars looking for the outright conference championship. Coming up, you are going to hear from the head coach of the Cougars, Jennifer Rockwood. Cougar Pre-Match Live will continue next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. This is Cougar Pre-Match Live. It's time to get the scoop on today's match from head coach Jennifer Rockwood. Let's rejoin your host, Jason Shepard. Welcome back to Sullivan Field at LMU. Jason Shepard, Jenny Bug-Smith with you. It's now time for our pre-match interview with the head coach of the Cougars, Jennifer Rockwood. As always, it is brought to you by Zions Bank. We haven't forgotten who keeps us in business. Can you believe it's already the regular season finale? No, it's it's just gone so fast. This has just been a really fun group to be around, and, and things have gone really well for us, and they've been working hard. So I think when things are good, things go really fast. So it has. It's just kind of flown by. A lot of the heavy lifting was done last week in terms of at least a share of the conference championship going to the NCAA tournament. How has practice gone this week knowing that at least that part of it's behind you? Yeah, it was it was great because obviously, you know, we played so well last weekend and I and I think that even gave us a little bit more hunger to even get better. Um, we, we played, I felt really well on Thursday night, scored some nice goals, kept the zero and then obviously against a, such a talented and successful team like Santa Clara to play the way we played, it, it just made everybody want to get even that much better. We did so many great things as we watched the film we still saw that there's still more we can do there's still things we can do better to be more dangerous in our attack well and I I would think it's like a coach's dream you you have all that you accomplished that last week but yet there's still something to play for it's not like you're Mm -hmm. going through the motions this week Mm -hmm. because you have a chance to win outright help seeding Mm -hmm. maybe even host a game in the NCAA yeah absolutely you know playing for something every game and that's just kind of how the conference goes especially without our conference tournament this is kind of like the championship game you know we had the the quarters the semi and now this is the finals. The, but the fact that we, we've already locked in the NCAA bid, I mean, that certainly means a lot for us, knowing that we had to get that to go to the tournament this year. But this is uh, this last week just kind of some fine-tuning um, and uh, playing for the outright championship. I think that means a lot when you don't really have to share it with anybody, and, and that's the opportunity we have. And then just setting yourself up as best you can. You never know what's going to happen in the selection, but you, you want to do everything you can to, to give yourself a good situation. This LMU team kind of on the opposite end of things. I know in talking with Coach Myers, injuries have really hit them hard this year, and they've just never been able to get going. What do you see in this Lion team that you'll face tonight? Yeah, well, it's it has, I'm sure, been a difficult journey for them. You know, within conference, all of their games, at least the last five, have been within a goal, right? So they're just on the wrong side of that one goal differential, which is so close. And, and you know, it's senior night for them. I'm sure they want to send their seniors off. Uh, on a good note, I'm sure they're going to come ready and fighting. Um, and, and, you know, they could play one of their best games of the season tonight, and we have to be prepared for that. And and our goal is to increase our play over last weekend and be better than we were last weekend. So that's kind of the mentality that we're going into it, knowing that we're going to get a really good game tonight. So in terms of getting better,
better off of the way things went last week. What are a couple of your keys for tonight? You know, I think one of the things um, that we found was we're not ever sure what uh, kind of lineup or, or system that a team's going to play against us. And something this group's done really well is to adjust to that uh, mid-game or, or early in the game, finding where the space is. Uh, we're, we're very successful when we can find Liv faced up or Kayla faced up. And the next thing to add to that is a few more connections to our forwards. Our forwards touching the ball a little bit more in the box. Um, and, you know, Lisa's so dangerous. We, we need to get her the ball a little bit more, and the forwards got to look for the space that we can find them. So I think just a few more connections in the attacking third with our attacking five players. Last week you had mentioned to me one of the keys was staying in, in attacking shape. Yes. How, how do you feel you did with that and maybe take that one step further into this week? How much are you focusing on that again? Yeah, after we came back from our four-game road trip, we, we recognized just from the film that we were just really getting out of shape, and and uh, that, that hurts everything everything you know and so we really focused on our attacking shape uh that was very successful for us um but now just maintaining that i think in the last we talked about the last 20 15 minutes of holding on to a lead you have to make different decisions and so you know we were still playing to score a goal when we were up 2-0 and we just need to keep it around knock it around we lost our shape therefore we were prone to some transitions a couple of Santa Clara's best options were in those last five, ten minutes when we gave up counterattack. So being staying in our attacking shape also sets us up to defend better and to make sure that we um, keep the ball in front of us, and, uh, and that just leads to more attack. Last thing before I let you go, and, and fans will be able to hear from Josie Ewing coming up in our next segment. What has Josie added position switch in the back line now and has really kind of fit in seamlessly, hasn't she? She has. Our, our back line is really playing well right now. Um, we've got some great experience. Josie, as a freshman, you know, was an attacking player. We needed someone out back, and we've turned a lot of uh, great attacking players into outside backs. And, um, and she's just so solid. She's comfortable with the ball. She's very quick. She's a solid, uh, you know, super aggressive ball winner. Um, and she's been working on her shot and her cross a lot. She's playing on the left side, and uh, she's just done really well. You know, with the success we've had with being and Lizzie on on the right side, now we're seeing that su- same success with Josie and Bella on the on the left side. So we just continue to to get better and more confident in our positions. But Josie's been a huge part of you know the, our last two uh, shutouts, and then you know our, our attack a lot of times starts with our outside back. Give me a phone tonight. Good luck. Awesome. Thanks. That's the head coach of the Cougars, Jennifer Rockwood. Welcome back to Sullivan Field at LMU, BYU and LMU getting ready to get things underway coming up. And it is senior night here, by the way. BYU had their senior night a week ago tonight. LMU senior night tonight. They have seven players uh, that will be playing their final games here in Los Angeles. Uh, Bug, I'm curious, one of the keys that Coach Rockwood mentioned was being able to adjust on the fly to how teams defend them and then taking advantage of those opportunities if somebody's going to give you something attack it that really is the mentality of this team attack every opportunity that the opposition gives you i think poe's done a great job this year like you said and jen said mentioned in her interview just adjusting to what other teams are doing and being able to like uh expose their weaknesses and just go at them and i think another thing poe's done really well is just uh like pressure like just their high pressure just forces other teams to turn the ball over makes them uncomfortable so it'll be interesting and great to see tonight how boU does and how that all plays out when we come back my chat with sophomore defender josie gwynn this is cougar pre-match live and you're listening to byu women's soccer on the new skin byu sports network it's time to hear from the cougars themselves as we head back to the broadcast booth for our pre-match player interview here's jason shepherd Welcome back to Los Angeles. Shep filling in for Greg Rubel tonight. Greg will be on the call. BYU football. Cougars looking to snap the streak of losing. They are at Boise State tonight. Hoping uh, We're going to send good vibes up towards the Boise area. Ginny Bug-Smith, former Cougar, joining me on the broadcast tonight. BYU women's soccer in L.A. taking on LMU. It is the regular season finale. And sophomore defender Josie Gwynn has done a great job being part of a fantastic backline for the Cougars this season. I caught up with the Murrieta, California native earlier today. Here's our conversation. Take me through this season for you to get from the very beginning to now. It's already the final game of the regular season. Yeah, it's kind of crazy how fast it's gone. It's been a really exciting, fun ride. 
and all of us have just grown so close together. I mean, looking back to our first game when we played UCLA, we've battled through a lot of different games, and we've worked hard every step of the way, and I think that's something that's really cool about the team is that we have so much fun, like, right now, playing soccer, tennis, dunking on girls. I mean, we, we just really enjoy each other's company, and I think that's what has made this season so enjoyable for everyone. Speaking of uh, soccer, tennis, were you on the winning team here? I don't uh, want to, like, rub salt yeah, in the wounds touchy, if you weren't. Touchy subject, no. Uh, I was in the middle bracket at the end of it, so you know what? We'll take that as a win for now. <laughs> you know, this is one of the things that I really like about you. You are ultra competitive. Oh. It, you can see it out on the on the field. Like, I love that. Have you always been that way? Yeah, you can ask my parents, starting from a very young age. I mean, I grew up with six, I mean, there's six six kids in our family, and I grew up with two older siblings that were pretty competitive, and I just always wanted to tag along, and I think starting from a really young age, I was extremely competitive. You guys were able to accomplish quite a bit last weekend, getting the auto bid of the NCAA tournament, minimum a share of the conference championship, but you guys have an opportunity to get it outright. How has this week of preparation been with that goal in mind? Um, this week has been a really good week of practice and just the attitudes of the girls. We took our time to enjoy our wins this last weekend because they were really well-deserved. Um, but we got right back to work, and we know that we want the outright. We don't want to share the title with anyone. We want it all to ourselves. So the focus for this week has been LMU, and we talked a little bit about them, but we're ready to go out and play our game and just take the title for ourselves. You've done a really nice job on the back line this year. You had the position switch. Yeah. How has that gone for you, do you think? Well, I mean, coming into BYU, I had always played outside mid or forward growing up. So having that switch last year, was it was an adjustment for sure. Um, and this year has just been a lot – it's been smooth, I feel like. Um, the back line, we're really connected outside of the field, off the field. And so when we're on the field, I feel like it's just one cohesive group moving together. And so it's been a lot easier for me to adapt to the new position because of the people I play with. Coach Rockwood said that they've been working with you on your shot a little bit too. How's yeah. that going? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to score tonight. Calling it. There you go. <laughs> calling your shot. I like yeah, it. Yeah, yep. Um, uh, no, I've been hitting that outside shot uh, after practice about every day. So... I, I feel it coming, hopefully. I would imagine with this team's mindset of being ultra-aggressive and really pushing it, like anybody could score at any time. Just you guys all have that mentality. Yeah, it's it's a cool team because previous teams I've been on, the outside backs and defenders pretty much stay in their position. But being on this team, they switch me to outside back, but they're like, we still want you to get up in the attack. So me and Bing are always just constantly looking for opportunities to fly up the side and get into that attack, which is really cool. Thanks for the time, Josie. Good luck tonight. Yeah, thank you so much. Bug, we have audio proof. If she does score a goal tonight, she called her shot. She did call her shot. So we, on. Yeah, we have we have the proof. So I'm really, really hoping that uh, among the many goals we hope BYU scores tonight, that Josie is one of them. All right, when we Me come too. back, LMU head coach Michelle Myers. That's next on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Welcome back to Cougar Pre-Match Live. Getting you ready for BYU women's soccer. For more pre-match coverage, here's Jason Shepard. Welcome back to Cougar Pre-Match Live. Jason Shepard, Jenny Bug-Smith with you tonight from Los Angeles. The Cougars and the LMU Lions will kick off in a little bit here at Sullivan Field. LMU head coach Michelle Myers is in her seventh season, and injuries have been one reason why this season has been such a struggle for her team. I talked with Coach Myers about that and tonight's matchup. I know a 3-12-4 and four season thus far is not what you had hoped for. When you look at 2018 for LMU soccer, how would you sum it up? You know, the funny thing is, is when we first, we just got a brand new AD, and one of the questions he asked was, um, you know, what is your biggest obstacle to success? And my <laughs> uh, knowing, you know, some of the things we had coming up this year, my answer was injuries. <laughs> So, um, you know, we've we've uh, been hit with lots of injuries this year. So um, we not only graduated, you know, a very um, important class, you know, last year, um, but then we were hit with, you know, we've got three ACLs, an MCL, uh, an ankle surgery, um, 
you know, we've got a stress fracture, uh, and then we've got, you know, some one kid with GI issues. So we've got about seven players that are, you know, out of the mix, and some of those were very important players. Um, we've got a back line that's got three kids playing back there that never played back there. So, um, so yeah, so consequently, it's been a year where, you know, again, um, unfortunately, we, you know, we just don't have the bodies healthy that we need to have. And, you know, and we're, you know, we're doing our best to get through some stuff. And, you know, we've, we've had 15 games that have been decided by one goal or less. The whole situation with injuries, no coach or player ever wants to bring it up as an excuse, but it's certainly, it plays a role if you have so many players that are not available to you, it's very, very difficult to accomplish the goals that you set forth. Yeah, again, unfortunately, with the college seasons as compact as they are, again, these injuries, like, you know, the MCL, the kid played in our first game, and then she's out for the rest of the season, you know, um... And the bottom line is, is you know, again, in our conference, our schools, you know, they're they're all private schools. Um, you know, our, our dollars don't go as far, and so you know, the depth of our rosters aren't as as great as as you know some of these bigger, you know, conferences and and, and state schools even. You know, so unfortunately, you know, like like I've said, is we've had good games, but we haven't been able to play a consistent 90 minutes because we just don't have the depth if someone has to come off for you know again at Pepperdine we're playing in you know pretty bad heat we got we got to make some changes the level is dropping to you know pretty much because we just don't have you know with the injuries the depth that we want to have those are things that yeah you don't want to use it as an excuse but at the end of the day it's part of it it. is because yeah you you just you know you just you look down your bench and you know you, you don't have the bodies that you need to to be able to stay at the level you want to play at for 90 minutes what do you think of this BYU team coming in sitting on top of the uh, WCC right now well I think it's great you know uh, again anytime you know I always say this is uh, you know our, our conference it always comes down to the wire you know and um, these last you know the years that that I've been here as the, the head coach, it's really, you know, the parity has kind of, you know, gotten a lot stronger. And, uh, you know, like I said, it's always coming down to those last couple weekends to figure out who's going to really win it or get a share of it or, you know, get the bid. So I think, you know, it's great that, you know, again, I don't think, you know, BYU was at the height of their game when they started the season. You know, I think they were, again, still trying to figure out a younger team. And, um, you know, and so, like I said, I think they're, again, in a good rhythm now, and it's uh, where you want to be when you're ending the season and now, you know, getting the bid to go into playoffs. Unlike BYU, who only has one senior, I believe you have seven, possibly eight seniors. It will be senior day. What has been the imprint that this senior class has made on the program? They've made a big one. Like I said, we've got, I think there's three players that are um, fifth-year red shirts, you know, seniors and so you know basically they were a a big part of you know not only our our 2015 season but again just getting us into you know the not only the team culture that we want to be at but also you know again um, you know that's what's hard for me is you know the fact that they're losing these games this year when there are players that have helped us build the program but again it's just one of these years where They can't do it on their own. They just don't have enough help. But they've all been very impactful for our program. You know, we we will have one that's coming back. She's she's one of our ACLs this year. You know, we had another one. You know, she was our leading goal scorer last year. And unfortunately, we had to put her in the back this year. And so those are things that, um, you know, as a senior, you're doing your best to help the team in whichever way you can. But like I said, at the end of the day, the senior class has been really important to us and a big part of you know, elevating the program and and getting us to, um, you know, a place where we wanted to be. And, you know, we took a little hiccup this year and, you know, we'll we'll basically, like I said, is get everyone healthy and, and get back to work. Thanks to Coach Myers for taking a few minutes. Time now for Wilner and O'Reilly's Laws of the Game feature brought to you by Wilner and O'Reilly Immigration Solutions in Utah and abroad at wilneroreilly.com. We're asking you, what is the minimum number of soccer balls that have to be provided by the home team for a game. The minimum number of soccer balls that have to be provided by the home team for a game. That answer is next as well as starting lineups and the opening kick. This is Cougar Pre-Match Live. You're listening to BYU Women's Soccer on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. 
Welcome back to Cougar Pre-Match Live, getting you ready for BYU women's soccer. For more pre-match coverage, here's Jason Shepard. Let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. You're listening to BYU Women's Soccer on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Welcome back to Sullivan, Sullivan Field at LMU, BYU. LMU getting ready to kick off in just a few minutes. Before we get to that, though, let's answer tonight's question in Will Learn O'Reilly's Laws of the Game segment. Our question is, what is the minimum number of soccer balls that have to be provided by the home team for a game? The answer, not fewer than five balls furnished by the home team shall be available for use in a game, and the ball shall be identical in size, make, grade, and color. So the answer is is five and that's laws of the game brought to you by wilner and o'reilly and this is byu women's soccer on the new skin byu sports network 